Okay, g'day there. It's Monday morning. It's another week here at Ozama and we're working on our M41 Walker Bulldog. One of the drivers gave me a report that there's a problem with one of the two magnetos in the engine. Job today is to identify which magneto is at fault and to try and work out what needs to be done to be able to troubleshoot this and fix it. So somewhere under here is gonna be the magnetos, timing marks for the engine. Down inside the fighting compartment, there's also gonna be an access point to be able to rotate the engine by hand so that I can check the timing of the magneto. So that's the job for today. But first thing I'm gonna do is attempt to start the engine up and try and identify which one is the faulty magneto. This is the toggle that operates the electric starter motor. This is the other toggle that operates the boost coil that helps give the ignition system a bit of extra zippity zap. You pull both of them in together at the same time and when you release the starter motor, you're releasing the boost coil. And then with the magnetos, it's a four position switch. So it has off, left, right, and both. Next, I'm gonna have a go at starting it. It's a little bit of a convoluted process to get the thing going, but mostly it involves working this thing, giving it a good few squirts of juice, then turning the magneto switch to both. Making sure the stop button's out. Let's see if we'll get it going. This thing's only been running for a few minutes, but it's quite incredible how much heat comes off it. Uh, I guess being a air-cooled engine, and especially a petrol engine, it, uh, the warm-up period is like almost instantaneous. So there's quite a lot of heat radiating off here. Thankfully, it's winter time now. I'm pretty sure that the mags are underneath these covers. Yeah. I'll take them off. And yeah, there we go. <clears throat> so the inner mag is the right, outer mag is the left. So the inner mag fly fires the flywheel end spark plugs and the outer mag fires the accessory end spark plugs. That gives us a little bit more information when it comes to looking at spark plug color and condition. So I'm hopeless at remembering this sort of thing. I'm gonna put a nice prominent R and L on these covers. I'm leaning more towards the fact that it's this one that's not adjusted properly because if this one was adjusted too far advanced, the engine would be kicking back and bucking a bit when you try to start it. The next thing to look for is that there's a little access port for looking at the flywheel position so that I can try to start to work out where number one top dead center is. Yeah, back braking this is not too bad actually. All things considered. This is a big combined differential steering transmission unit. So again, looking at the workshop manual, the flywheel of the engine is obviously here at the back and 
somewhere under this flange. So looking at this, I'm pretty sure that this is probably the inspection plate for, for getting in there to have a look at the timing marks on the engine. Slackened off the nuts, holding it on. So it's definitely an inspection hole uh, and this mark here is a reference point that there will be stampings on the flywheel that you have to rotate the engine so that number one cylinder is at top dead center on the compression stroke and there'll be some timing markers there that once they're lined up we can then check the synchronization of that to the setting of two, two mags. Next challenge is how to actually rotate the engine over because you can bump it on the starter, but that's not a very precise way of turning the engine over. And the only way you can really do that is to be able to turn the engine over by hand. On this, it seems to be the only way you can do it is through a access point at the front of the engine, which I think is gonna require a special tool getting comfortable here in the fighting compartment behind this plate which is buried behind a bird's nest of fuel lines is a drive system inside here so that I can turn the engine over by hand so uh, without disconnecting too much stuff I'm going to snip off the safety wire and get the plate off and have a look to see what I need guess I've got a feeling I'm going to have to make a special tool to fit this particular spline and I don't know how difficult or easy that's going to be many many hours later and we're up to day two on the walker bulldog so inside the fighting compartment behind the access plate on the accessory case we've got this splined fitting that comes out so that's what the special tool was supposed to mesh with i don't have access to the correct spline to fit that but the inside of it is threaded so i've made up some bolts to screw in there and I'm able to turn the engine over it. It seems to be the plugs are devilishly difficult to get to and I've actually been advised that it's simpler to <laughs> pull the engine out. So I'm gonna spend a few hours having a go at trying to get one plug out, otherwise we'll just put it back the way I found it and leave it and add it to the queue of jobs to do after Armour Fest. There's a plug lead disappearing into here it's got a screw-on nut that I've got to remove. Get the socket in the right spot. <laughs> of course, it's going to be fun when it comes to getting the thing to start again, but I guess that's future Steve's problem. But I think we've got some movement here. <laughs> Look at that. Nice. I can see the spark plug now in my mirror. Next job is to get the bugger out. There you go. Happy days, I got the bloody spark plug out. And um, yeah, it's pretty pretty black. I need to check which mag fires which cylinder because I've got a feeling that the uh, accessory end spark plugs is fired by the right hand mag so that would make sense that the plug is uh, black and carbon valve. Some time has passed so I'll show you where we're up to. First thing that I did is that I've screwed in a compression fitting into cylinder number one. I've jury rigged up a piece of fuel hose onto the end of that so I could be inside the fighting compartment turning the engine by hand with the piece of hose stuck in my ear so I can listen out for the sounds of compression whilst I had a trusty assistant watching the timing marks on the flywheel. don't know if you can see it but it's got on there ignition one and two so that's the 10 degree before top dead center timing mark 
for the engine so that tells us that the crankshaft and the piston on number one is set at the correct position for the top dead center 10 degrees before top dead center it's a point at which that the magnetos should light up and would you believe what i found the timing mark for the left mag is reasonably close to the timing mark on the body for the for the left mag so and that's the the good one then if we shift to the right mag we can see that the timing mark is nowhere near it and it's actually been timed up as if it was installed as a left mag so that's really interesting sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious i'm going to mark the positions of where they were so that should i play around with this and it turns into a massive disaster and the thing no longer runs i can put it back to the way it, way it was this pipe provides a little bit of suction back from the throttle body so that it creates a bit of ventilation at the magneto which helps dry it out if it happens to get moisture or condensation inside Go. I'm going to do this 100% by feel because I can't see where it actually is. I'm going to have to take the nut off completely. Bugger. Alright. See if I can wiggle waggle mag up a bit. Yep. Now, ah, there you go. So this is the right magneto out of the Walker Bulldog, the one that wasn't performing properly. I've got it out of the vehicle and I just want to do a sort of a bench test to check it to see its spark output plus also its actual timing to make sure that we've got the relationship between when the points are open and the timing marks to make sure that they line up. What I want to do is make sure that when the timing marks line up that the points are actually opening so that I can double confirm that when this is installed in the vehicle and this mark is timed up and synchronized with the mark on the flywheel that I know that everything's hunky-dory. So I've got my mag timer unit on carefully rotating the rotor there we go so I'm just jiggling the rotor around the point to confirm that yep yeah, the points are opening pretty much exactly when the timing marks line up and that's exactly what we're looking for so we've got 200 percent confidence that when we install this in the vehicle it's going to spark at the right time next thing i'm going to do a functional test I'm going to spin the magneto in the correct direction of rotation and I'm going to use a high energy spark output tester now the standard in the manual is a five millimeter gap but this is probably closer to like 10 10 millimeters so we'll give that a go I mean it should it should jump that without any problems if it's healthy this contact here is the actual coil output which goes to the little distributor cap which the rotor button then distributes the the high energy spark and this is the input from the booster coil that helps the engine crank over when it's just starting alligator clips and jumper wire so i'm going to ground this to the body of the magneto so that provides a spark to go to earth to make the circuit everything's there i'm not going to electrocute myself wow look at that As you spin the thing up faster, you see the relationship of what makes magnetos really tick. The faster you spin them, the heavier the spark.
out in there. Look at the way it just burns straight through the burns straight through the cardboard. Can you imagine sticking your finger in that. How do I start off with this? When I was looking at both the magnetos, the timing marks appeared to be out, looking at right from left, and I'm probably sure at that point anyone in the GA aviation community that's had anything to do with these Bendix Scintilla magnetos would have been screaming at me that the R and the L denotes direction of rotation. <laughs> in my adult brain, I figured that right magneto, right timing mark, left, left timing mark, but it doesn't work that way because they both rotate in the same direction. So I went back again and readjusted the settings, used my mag timer to set the right mag correctly. I'm about to put it back together again and give it a test and see if this thing works. Contact. So I might have found a new favourite. So this is the first time that I've driven the Walker Bulldog and it uh, definitely didn't disappoint. You know, like down the back there, we've got a, a 14 litre flat six supercharged engine. So eat your heart out, Ferdinand Porsche. Two speed transmission. And it's just like a big, powerful American car. Tons of granite. Actually, <laughs> got to be a little bit careful in the straights there because just on the barest amount of throttle it just sort of surges along and it's easy to let it get away from you uh, uh, in top gear even on the tightest bits of our track there you just carry a bit of extra speed and it just digs in and goes around so yep she's ready for armor fest and if you get the opportunity to ride in the walker bulldog i highly recommend it it's got the steve seal of approval i reckon